Okay, so as promised, I've brought you out here again on an evening when the mountains are visible. And as you can see, we've got a perfect evening. The mountains are visible. We've got some lovely wispy cloud over the tops of the mountains. It's clear on the horizon where the sun is setting. So hopefully from this angle, we might actually get a nice bit of alpine glow on the mountain tops, or at least some color on the clouds. So it's going to be a good evening. So if you were wondering what I meant by that intro, then uh, you need to go back and look at my previous video. I'll put a link to that up here, where I brought you out here and showed you the benefits of shooting with a telephoto lens from your home area and how you can isolate the mountain tops and find perspectives to photograph these mountains but at the same time get rid of all these distracting foreground objects. Okay, but today as I said I'm gonna show you that I can also photograph the Kamni Kalps in the background here. So as I said in my previous video <clears throat> It's a great viewpoint from here because you can get the western mountains where the sun sets, you can get Shmana Gora over there, and then you can get the Kamni Kalps. The conical shaped mountain there is Mount Stojic, and the, the mountains there are another part of the Kamni Kalps, and that other little conical shaped peak, peak there is Grinzovets, the highest peak in the mountain range, and you can get another section over there. So from here you can get all of these mountains in view. But all these distracting objects like the roofs of the houses and the top of the electricity cables are all in the way. So we need to use a telephoto lens and find the right perspective to zoom in and capture it all. Now, I'm a little bit further down from where I was in the previous video. And the reason for that is that um, to get both sets of these mountains clearly in the frame, I needed to move over a bit to avoid these trees. So there are some trees there and some trees there. So, but from this position, I'll show you that I can zoom in and capture all of it. Now, because there's some nice side lighting, the sun's going down on the side. And also, of course, the mountains are quite far in the distance and there's a little bit of haze. So I'm going to put a polarizing filter on. Now the polarizer, Obviously when there's side lighting works really well because it darkens the sky and really brings out the definition in the clouds. But it also, the polarizer helps to cut through the haze and give you a sharper, cleaner picture. So I'm going to put that on now. Now I'll show you the effect that the polarizer has. Here we see with the polarizer turned off. And then when we turn the polarization on, see how it darkens down the sky and brings out the definition. Now it really is a great viewpoint from here. There are two sections to the mountains and from directly here from if you if you can see that tree there on the left of the tree I can get one section of the mountains with Grintovets and to the right of the tree I can get another section of the mountains. So I've actually got two two compositions really that I can swing between. And the great thing about this uh, composition is I can actually just pivot around and shoot many different mountains from here. I can shoot Shmana Gora hilltop. I can shoot Storzic. I can spin around to shoot Grintovets. And I can spin around to shoot that one. And I can even spin right the way around and shoot the sun setting over the hills there. I'll show you now. Come back around. Come 
So I can get one composition of those mountains over there. Then I can move around to get a composition of these mountains with Grintovets. A nice wispy cloud over the mountain box. Now I'm using a, um, a 16 by 4 letterbox crop. I'm doing it in camera. And the reason for that is obviously I've got to come up quite high to get the, um, uh, the trees and the electricity cables out of the shot. So if I use the, the full frame, the, the full aspect ratio, I'm gonna, probably going to have too much sky in the scene and I don't want that. So actually the letterbox crop 16 by 4 works much better in this case. Lovely picture of those mountains there. As I said, I can get Storjic, but Storjic is uh, quite hazy right now, so it's um, not looking so good. And it's not so I got some good photos of Shmanagora in the previous video, so go back and check that out if you want to see them. Okay, so now I'm just waiting for that sun to go down, and hopefully we'll get some nice colour and light over the mountain tops. Or maybe not. You never know what's going to happen. So let, but let's wait and see, shall we? And hope for the best. Now it's very clear where the sun is going down. Too clear, in fact. And the sun is far too bright to get any kind of a picture of the sun setting. But I got some on the previous days. Uh, again, in the other video. But I'll throw a couple up now just to show you what I got before. But now, um, as you can see, I'll show you in a minute in the video, but the sun, it's far too clear and the sun is way too bright on that horizon to capture anything. So I'm not going to bother with that this evening. I'm just going to wait and hope for some colour uh, over those mountains. As I showed you in the previous video, it's important to keep everything nice and tight and nice and stable because when you're shooting with a very long lens like this, it's very sensitive to even the slightest vibration. The slightest breeze can cause vibration. Now, thankfully, there's actually virtually zero wind today, so uh, I'm not too worried about it, but I'm keeping an eye on it just in case. Uh, I showed you that you could put a beanbag on the top of the, the lens to give it some extra weight and stability. You could use an umbrella to, uh, as a bit of a windbreak. Uh, the other important thing I didn't mention, it's useful to know, is to make sure that you haven't got the strap on your camera. It's a mistake I make far too often, and usually <laughs> it's a bit too late to try and fiddle around and take it off. But always best when you're shooting long exposures to make sure that you take the strap off your camera because if the strap's blown in the wind and that causes that causes some minor vibration on your camera yeah you want to eliminate all movement whatsoever now you can see the color on the mountains has changed there's more brown there now because the sun is just going cresting down over the mountain tops over there we're starting to get a bit of colour. It's going to be brief. Good thing I've got my composition set and I'm ready to go. Changing the colour over the mountains in just an instant is amazing. So if you can see, by coming back, moving back, yeah, You've increased that separation between the top of the electrical cables and the tops of the trees and I'm managing to zoom in and isolate just the mountain tops and a little bit of the forested hills just below it to find a nice perfect clean composition and it's all about where you stand and how you use the telephoto lens. So the telephoto lens for landscape photography is a fantastic thing to have.
Well, the sun's down over the mountains, over the hills, <clears throat> but it's, I think, five or ten minutes before it actually sets below the horizon. And hopefully there, get a bit, bit more colour. Maybe, maybe not, we'll see. Maybe while I'm waiting, I'll see if I can get sank from storage each bit. It's storage each is a bit further, and so it's a bit more hazy there. Light's not quite so good. my other composition. I'm going to go in a bit closer now to Grintovets and the peak to the left. My ISO at 200, aperture f16, and about 0.3 of a second exposure. So thankfully, there's no wind. Everything's nice and steady. Now I moved my composition a bit. Although I had a wider composition earlier to get in uh, the other two little smaller peaks to the right of that. Now sun's gone down the light's not so nice on those two peaks so I've zoomed in a bit closer to really focus on the peaks on the mountain tops where the light is oh. got the white balance on daylight I might try it on cloudy now now it's going down if I put it on cloudy then it adds some warmth to the mountain tops Now what I really like about this composition in particular is these two lines of snow here on the edge and then we've got Grintovets here which is what I'm focusing on and then this big peak to the left and now we've got a little bit of colour over the top. You can use your white balance <coughs> as a warm-up filter or a cooling filter actually. So in this case I've put it to uh, cloudy so to use it as a warm-up filter to add some warmth across the mountain tops. If you don't do this here as long as you shoot in raw you can always adjust your white balance afterwards. So that's one of the many reasons to always shoot in RAW. Starting to get some subtle colour over the mountain on the left there. That's uh, Kochna, I believe. Or maybe not, <laughs> I'm not quite sure. Starting to get a bit of colour now over Storzic. So, as I said, that's what's so great. I can uh, just swivel around and quickly find a new composition. Okay. That's much nicer now, actually. Have a storage. See what I mean about how the light changes? Just a minute ago, that was very hazy and not very interesting. Now all of a sudden, it's just lit up. Now I can swing back to my original composition. Some real nice colour over those peaks now. Oops. 
I just love this viewpoint. The light and colour of Astorjic now is incredible. It changes just like that. And it's so great to find a position like this. You can be so reactive. You can sw switch between two different mountain tops, two different compositions very quickly and very easily. Has some nice colour in the higher clouds too, so I'm pulling back a bit to get more of the sky in. Now one trick sometimes it's very hard to see if you've got something in the way. So what I usually do is dial up the exposure to overexpose using the live view so I can clearly see down the bottom there if there's anything in the way. And dial it back down. Well, what a great evening this has turned out to be. Beautiful colour right over uh, Grintovets and the mountain to the left there. I well, hope you've enjoyed this and uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos. And uh, catch you later. And remember, if you can't travel to the mountains, then bring the mountains to you using a telephoto lens. And now the colour's kicking off over Shimanagora, so I can swivel around to that. Fantastic. I didn't think I was going to photograph Shimanagora this evening. That really goes to show you, by working hard, finding the right perspective, I found a position where I can pivot around to shoot one, two, three, four different mountain compositions. And also the sunset over there if you wanted to.